Hi, we have in the Michigan State Capitol what I believe to be a really fine collection of portraits, um, some of them dating back almost 200 years. And then um, some more recent portraits that were recently commissioned, including this very fine portrait of a Mr. William Webb Ferguson. And we're excited about the portrait of Ferguson for a couple of reasons. One of them, because of the, obviously, because of the content of the, the subject, but also because our master um, decorative painter, um, Josh Reisner, was able to do this portrait and was commissioned by the Michigan Legislative Black Caucus to do the portrait um, in the February 2018 when it was unveiled. So the subject matter, Mr. William Webb Ferguson was Michigan's first African-American legislator, uh, was elected to the Michigan House of Representatives in 1892. Um, the reason we chose this very specific location to hang Representative Ferguson's portrait was very intentional. Um, because of its close proximity to the Michigan Supreme Court um, chamber. Um, Ferguson had what we consider to be a landmark court case that was heard by the Michigan Supreme Court in 1890. Um, it was a case um, dealing with the subject matter of, of segregation and discrimination. Uh, Mr. Ferguson came from a very well-known, very prominent Detroit family. Um, one evening, a friend of his was visiting from out of town, and being a good host, he offered to take him out to dinner. So they went to a very well-known Detroit restaurant for dinner, and um, they were refused service because of the color of their skin. Technically, the owner said he would allow them to eat in his establishment, but he and his friend would have to move to the saloon, to the segregated part of the restaurant. Um, Mr. Ferguson did, I think, a very courageous thing for the time period. He sued the restaurant owner for wrongful discrimination based on, on skin color, on the fact that he was African American. Um, his court case made its way through the Michigan court system um, all the way up to the Michigan Supreme Court. Keep in mind, folks, that this discrimination took place in a northern state. Um, I share this story with many of our visitors and many Michiganders are genuinely surprised that that kind of discrimination was taking place in, in a northern state. I think as northerners we tend to think sometimes of that kind of segregation and discrimination taking place more predominantly in the southern states. Um, sadly, discrimination and segregation was alive and well in Michigan. Keeping in mind, too, that this happened in a state that had sent 90,000 boys to the battlefields of the Civil War to try to bring to an end that kind of hatred and discrimination. So as I mentioned, Mr. Ferguson's case made its way through the courts up to Michigan's highest court, meeting in this very chamber, and the justices on our Michigan Supreme Court ruled in his favor. Um, that case was so important to our state because it set in Michigan a legal precedent that separate would not be equal in Michigan. And sadly, we all recognize that discrimination still takes place um, in our country, but in Michigan that set the legal precedent that it would not be allowed legally. Um, two years later, Mr. Ferguson does, I believe, another very courageous thing and runs for the Michigan House of Representatives in 1892, was elected as the first person of color to serve in an elected office in this building. Um, we're going to have our uh, uh, portrait artist, Josh Reisner, um, talk to you also about the commissioning of this portrait and the passion that he put into completing this work. Hi, I'm Joshua Reisner, artist in residence at the Michigan State Capitol. And I'm standing in front of a painting that I did of William Webb Ferguson. Um, just wanted to talk a little bit about some of my process and what, what I was thinking without going into too much depth. And that is, um, the first thing is, if you look at, uh, we had to choose uh, from photos. And really, the only photo options we had were black and whites. And um, so all of the color that you see, the background, everything is, is improvised or ad lib. Um, I think I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, the background and the, the fact that he's got a hat on and a coat. Um, and he appears to be in either a dusk or dawn setting. And um, I like to, when I was choosing the color and the overall theme of the painting, I was thinking about the dawn of a new time, new century, 
Um, maybe even new ideas of like uh, you know, social advancements and things like that that he w would have advocated for. Um, so I think of it as a dawn setting um, right before daybreak and uh, that's what a lot of the coloring and stuff to me, but I, mean, I think some people think that it's a night scene. It was also uh, interesting, we had interesting conversations prior to painting it, whether having a coat and a top hat was a good thing because it's a little informal for like um, a portrait of this scale or whatever, but I felt like it, we wanted to try to get as much attention as we can to it, like, and it seemed like, you know, from looking at the photos that he had some flair, or, you know, he, you know, was probably stood out, I mean, even in the Capitol, and that seemed to fit to me that it was going to stand out to have, like, a top hat and a coat, and just sort of make him seem, um, give him some stability and strength and, like, some some unwavering, you know, structure uh, is how I was looking at those features of the portrait. Um, I tried to paint it in a time period. It's a turn, like, right before the turn of the century, so it's painted a little bit more classical, a little bit more refined, but uh, the coloring in the background represents, like, some, uh, what the movement's called tonalism, which is a uh, late 19th century, early 20th century landscape movement. Um, it's a little bit leaning towards Impressionism and stuff like that, and uh, thank you. <laughs>